So this is the HD Zero Freestyle V2, and what's so exciting about it is it fits into these small three inch style frames. And what's exciting about that? Well, HD Zero, who is it for? It doesn't have the best range, penetration, all that stuff. But if I throw it into a smaller frame, this thing doesn't fly as far anyway. And I find it is awesome for flying into uh, small parks, small gaps, everything like that. Because this one watt power is now taking me further. And then, you know, who's HD Zero for? That question, that's a little bit harder, right? The way I think about it, this is kind of like the sports car that you fling around on the weekend. This is something that's really, really fast and responsive. You can zip around, there's no latency, it's super fun to fly. This isn't going to be the SUV or the truck that takes you anywhere and everywhere, even if the roads aren't paved. And there's always going to be a, a place for that, right? I fly because I really like that feel that I get from that sporty, connected car. So let's go take this thing for a flight. All right, so here is 720p 60 mode and I'm getting that extra resolution. Um, but I'm, I'm trading off the extra frame rate. So I use this, it's still quite um, responsive. The latency is still four milliseconds, but uh, yeah, not not able to react as as quick as I as I could. But man, it, it's still pretty. Look at look at this. So let's push it out a little further. Just look at all this grass detail. I'm sure I'll mention it again, but or maybe I've already mentioned it. But I just love how consistent the ground is on HD Zero. I use the ground kind of as a reference for how fast I'm going and how, how far I am off the ground. And what I notice when I fly other systems is the ground uh, kind of turns to mush, um, kind of turns into like a puddle that starts moving across the ground. That makes it so hard for me to fly confidently really fast around stuff. So that's just one of the underrated th features of HD Zero. The I don't care <laughs> uh, video codec, basically, that's got where it doesn't matter how much details in the frame, you're going to get a consistent amount of image quality. And I'd argue that is actually super important to, to flying and feeling like you're actually there. You're not feeling like you're watching some kind of uh, YouTube compressed video. We are watching... Um, just something in real time. So what's this? I've never been back here before. So we got a little pond area. Oh, what the look at that. And now here's here's where we start to see the edge of the range of the system, right? So I'm actually pretty far away. I can't hear the quad at all anymore. And this is what the breakup's gonna look like, right? And uh, let's punch up here so we can see where we are. We're right there in the center in that pad out there, and we went through all these trees. So this is so much better than the 200 milliwatt VTX, but I'm still doing it in this nice, small 3-inch frame. So this is what I'm talking about. It's just so fun. And also the, uh, the color is amazing. Just the way that there's not compression on the color in the same way that there is with other video or, or with analog. It's just really impressive. So I'm just flying um, the lower resolution 90 FPS mode because that's the one I like to fly the most with HD Zero because it gives you that unmatched flight feel. Whew. And none of this really comes through when you're just watching it um, on a DVR clip. 
Here, I'll give you fly over where I am so you can have a reference. So I'm over here, and I'm going to fly behind this building. And yeah, I've got some breakup. And the way I've described this breakup is it's kind of like uh, raindrops on your windshield. And I mean, I, I'm not really seeing it while I'm flying. I'm kind of like tuning it out, going, oh yeah, I got rain on my windshield. Probably should turn my windshield wipers on. It's kind of like that effect. Um, if if you're watching it back, you're probably going like, "Well, how am I seeing when I'm I got all that uh, breakup?" But it's it's not like that for me. It's hard to explain. So here's the last video mode of the Nano 90. This is the uh, high penetration 60 FPS mode. So we're giving up resolution, but we're going. Um, to gain extra signal uh, quality. So I'll have a little less breakup and I'll have a little more capability to go a little bit further. This should also be a little bit better in um, spots with lots of RF interference. Um, this is not going to be my default mode. My default mode is the 90 FPS mode. I really really like how far I can go with that and how, how smooth it feels. So. I am going a little further uh, than I was before. I mean, it's not huge. Um, I'm able to see just fine, though, when I'm dealing with that breakup, because it's a checkerboard pattern that's kind of changing from frame to frame. I'd say uh, make sure you watch this in 60 FPS on YouTube. Um, it matters quite a bit. Uh, so, so you can see sometimes I'm getting video somewhere and sometimes I'm not. But uh, let's push it a little farther and we'll go around this building again. I think I've got my patch antennas pointing the other direction right now. Um, some people call the uh, the noise in HD0 seizure inducing. Um, I do not agree at all. It's just something you learn to tune out. It's just an indicator that uh, your signal's getting low. Um, so here we are pushing a little bit further. Yep, so I've got a little more uh, signal quality than I did last time that I went back here. And and that that's what you're going to get out of this. It's not night and day, but if you do need that extra little push, now you have a um, high penetration mode that offers a little bit better signal quality. So that is about it for the HD0 Freestyle V2. Um, definitely recommend picking this up. Um, this is what HD0 needed. I think everyone is in loud agreement about that fact. Here's the VTX up close. And it's fitting into the standard spot for a uh, DJI Vista. Same outside dimensions for the most part. Uh, look at that red. Man, it just really pops. <laughs> um, the ports are not uh, going to be knocked off like they were before. Everything's pretty flush mount and, and uh, protected versus the Freestyle uh, V1. And the connectors that we need, like the power and the MIPI, are uh, facing forward and the ant UFL antenna is facing out the back. So that was a huge issue with the Freestyle V1. The uh, main connector for the UART and power would get knocked off um, and I'm glad to see that is a much better situation here. So on the side here what we're looking at for ports um, on the top it says keypad that would be for controlling this VTX um, with an external keypad, you'd use that if you were not using a flight controller, for instance. And then the port on the bottom there is the new uh, small connector port for firmware updates. So it's slimmer. Um, it's going to be the same one that's used on the Race V3 and the Whoop Light board. One thing I noticed is the adapter for that connector for the firmware update port is not included in the box. Um, 
So keep that in mind. It is included, I think, with the goggle. Um, and if you don't have it, you can get the VTX programming tool from HD Zero that plugs into your computer. Uh, that would be a pretty convenient way to go about doing this. Now up front, we've got the Nano 90 camera. Love this camera. Uh, offers some really compelling modes like, of course, 540p 90fps, uh, which is just unparalleled uh, performance to anything um, before it. And it also has a new mode for higher penetration, 540p 60. I do actually end up running this camera a lot in the uh, 720p 60 mode that offers more detail, uh, but that is just a choice I make depending on the style of flying I'm doing for the day. Connecting the camera to the VTX, there's a nice, uh, I believe, 120 millimeter MIPI cable, uh, which is gonna be long enough for most uh, three inch and five inch builds that are set up in this way where the camera's up front and then there's a dedicated spot in the back for the VTX. So that is that, and it does have the included HD0 antenna. Um, the antenna is not the best antenna in the world, but it definitely is certified to work with the VTX and work well. One of the main ways that you'll see issues with an antenna on HD0 stuff is if you have a um, UFL to SMA adapter, and a lot of times what will happen is the uh, SMA uh, weld will actually crack and you won't realize it and then you'll get uh, intermittent connections and that really wrecks your video quality. So do try using the included antenna. Um, I did have to coil the antenna here as you can see uh, to take up the slack. That is an approved way to do that. I did ask Carl um, if this would cause any issues and he did test it in the lab and confirm that there's no issues with doing a uh, let's call it a tasteful amount of uh, curl you don't want to get too uh, carried away with that um, yeah pretty good and i'm liking how it's performing some final notes here's the weight 22 and a half grams not too bad it's definitely lighter than the current freestyle i did try decasing it to install in a tiny trainer it gets down to this 13 and a half grams. Um, I would keep the middle chunk here uh, for heat dissipation and strength. Uh, here it is mounted on the stack on the 25 by 25. Uh, it's a friction fit, doesn't fit the best, um, but I know there's people out there that are gonna do this. You might try drilling out the holes maybe in that top PCB. Uh, but yeah, you can see it does fit on there. Um, not exactly something I recommend, but it does show proof of concept you could strip this thing down and fit it into a tiny trainer. And uh, I do have a video uh, showing the performance of that. One thing is you need to make sure you do not route the antenna over the power amplifiers like I did here. Uh, so it has to go straight out the back. So on the left and the white and yellow are uh, UART pads. And then uh, near the top is a ground and power pad so if you do de decase this you can direct solder to pads on the circuit board which is good if you want to make a smaller build or if the connector somehow uh, were to get broken i also installed it in this 533 footy it fits just like the vista would fit and that's going to be the theme going forward here everything that was designed for vista it's going to now work with the freestyle v2 I've got it mounted on screws here. You, it's kind of hard to see, but I've, all, I've mostly been just taping things in with double-sided tape. Here's on the uh, full-size Apex. Fits, fits in perfect. Loved flying this with the KISS Ultra. Um, that, was a, that was a good combo, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to definitely build this one back up again and uh, be flying it quite a bit. The camera mount I found on Thingiverse. Uh, I'll put it, in the, put it in the description. So that's pretty much it. If it fits a Vista, it'll fit the Freestyle V2. All right, so that's HG0 Freestyle V2. The Nano 90 doing all the cool stuff that it does and that one watt power letting us fly in places that we couldn't fly before with a three inch. It's something you have to try for yourself. Anybody that flies HD0 now knows what I'm talking about. 
but if you haven't flown it before, don't knock it based on the video quality that you see on YouTube. It's really hard to express how good it looks, how good it feels. If you want a drone that feels so connected it's almost telepathic, this is the VTX and the camera to get. You're really going to love it. Try it out.